Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Nonya Boy 73, the small engine doctor. Today I'm going to be working on an older Echo PB300E backpack leaf blower. As you can see, it's an older unit. The owner says it doesn't run too good. So what I suspect is that the carb kit is shot. And also I should check the fuel line and the fuel filter in the fuel tank. But actually before I start any work on it, I pull it over to make sure the compression's good. Usually you can tell just by pulling if you feel good resistance or not. And that feels pretty good. The second thing I'm going to do is check for spark. So I'm just going to plug the plug back in and ground it to a metal part on the engine. Make sure the switch is in the on position. Now because it's a bit hard to reach down inside and ground it because it's plastic around here, I'm going to put a metal screwdriver and then ground it to the screwdriver in order to be able to ground the plug properly. Now I turn the lights off in the garage so you guys can see the spark good and hopefully there is spark. Always put the spark plug away from the spark plug hole because if your engine's flooded, the vapors could ignite on fire. So that's really good spark. Now I know it's not a spark issue, I'm gonna to continue to examine the fuel system. The first thing I'm gonna do is retrieve the fuel filter and the fuel line from the fuel tank to examine it. To retrieve the fuel line and filter, just grab a wire, bend the end like this in the hook. Now you'll need to remove the fuel cap and reach down inside and try to scoop up the line in the filter. Might take a few tries, but eventually you'll get it. And here it is. So the line feels fairly solid still. Sometimes they get brittle or they break and the filter falls off and the carb gets full of dirty crud. The only problem I see here is that the filter is really loose at the end of the line. What I usually do when this happens is I take the filter off, I snip the line a bit, and then I reinstall the filter. And what happened as I was pulling on the line, it broke from within the fuel tank. So this line here definitely needs to be replaced. So at this point here, I'm just going to start by emptying out the fuel tank. So at this point, I'm going to have to remove the whole shroud over here to get at the carburetor and the fuel tank. And you have to remove all the screws that hold the plastic shroud. There's one here, one there, one over here, and there's two down there. And I'll just start by removing the air filter cover. And there's usually a foam filter here. It needs to be replaced. It's gone. And I'm going to remove all the screws that hold this cover on. And by the way, you need a Phillips screwdriver to do this. And don't forget the two screws at the bottom. Now make sure the spark plug's off and out of the way. And now the whole cover should come right off. Now here's what it's going to look like once the cover's off. The fuel line goes through the grommet over here, but there's a connector here, so it's two separate lines. The line that goes from the connector on the tank to the carburetor looks in good condition. So at this point what I'm going to do is remove the fuel tank by removing the two Phillips screws that hold it on. Now that the screws are off, the tank will come off, but the fuel line is still hooked up to it from the carburetor. Now what you want to do is unhook this line. Just push it up like that. Now the first thing I'm going to do is repair the fuel line inside the fuel tank. I'm going to start by pulling the connector and the grommet out. Be very careful doing this because sometimes the grommets will break and you end up having fuel leaking. So just go nice and gentle. And there you can see where the old fuel line broke off. Just basically snapped right off. If that happens, even if your carburetor is in good condition, your machine's going to stop working. So always make sure to check the fuel line first inside your fuel tank. So at this point here, I'm going to measure out the old line. By the way, this line is 1 8 inside diameter. For this repair, it doesn't really matter the outside diameter of this line because it's not going through any holes. And by the way, you can buy this fuel line here specifically at your local steel dealer. It's a really good line. It's not going to vibrate off the connector inside the fuel tank. So now I'm going to remove the old fuel line from the connector. And I'm going to insert the new line. And you want to make sure it's inserted at least this far on the connector. 
If you find that the grommet is really loose on the connector, then replace the grommet. In this case here, it's fairly snug, so I'm going to reuse it. And I'm going to replace the fuel filter with one that is the exact same. Now I'm going to insert the fuel filter in the fuel tank. And now reinsert the grommet in the tank. And now the fuel tank's ready to go. So now I'm going to start removing the carburetor, which is right over here. And to do that, I'll have to remove both screws back here. Now I'll just remove the screws. And now you're going to have to remove the choke lever from the mechanism over here. Just simply tilt it down like this. And now the carb is just stuck there by the gasket, so just gently pry on it. It's going to come off. And the throttle cables over here, what you can do is mark the hole that it was in, so you'll remember when you put it back together. And to take it out, just simply pry it out like this. What happens here sometimes is the black marker mark will wear off when you clean the carb. So I use a hacksaw and make a slight groove there just to remember exactly where it was. You just want to mark it slightly. Just a little mark like that, then you know it's going to stay there. Okay, so here's the carb. I just used my compressor to blow off some of the dirt. First thing I'm going to do is start removing the screws that hold both covers on. Always make sure to work in a nice clean environment when you work on carburetors. Now I'll just pop the cover off. And these look like the original diaphragms. The way you can tell if the diaphragms are on the way out is if they're not totally flush against the body of the carburetor. These may work for a little while, but they won't last too long. I can see they're already starting to pop up here. If you see they're not tight on the holes here, they're not going to work. Now I'm going to remove the side with the metering diaphragm. And this diaphragm has a lot of wrinkles in it, so it's on its way out too. It may work for a while, but eventually it's going to quit. So might as well replace it because you don't want your customers to come back in a short time. And look at all the rust or dirt inside of here. That's a problem. That'll need to be cleaned. And you want to take off the gasket that's around the body of the carb as well. If you have an ultrasonic cleaner, you can put it in your machine and let it clean itself. But not everybody has an ultrasonic cleaner at home, so I'll show you how to do it if you do not have that machine. I'm also going to remove the needle and the lever here. You don't need to take this screw off completely because you can still slide the parts out. And make sure you do not lose the spring underneath the lever here. The last part I'm going to remove off this carburetor is the small screen on the other side. I'm just going to use a small pick like this, reach in and get it out. In the new carb kit there will be a new screen to reinstall there. So if you're doing this at home without the ultrasound cleaning machine, just spray some carburetor cleaner on the carb and you can let it sit there for a while. And I'm also going to spray a bit on the other side. Also, if you have a container of carburetor cleaner, you can just dip it right in. I'm just going to let that sit there for about a half hour. Okay, so my carb's been sitting here for a while now. I'm going to start cleaning it. Usually what I use is a wire brush with really soft wires on it. You have to make sure you do not damage the carb when you clean it. And sometimes an old toothbrush will work good. Just rub it across like this. The toothbrush is actually safer because it's not going to scratch the carburetor. And once you've done this a few times, just rinse it with the carb cleaner again. I do recommend that you wear gloves while doing this because it's very toxic stuff. So this will be clean enough for this job. People often ask me, do I need to replace the Welsh plugs? Well, you don't. I only replace them if I keep having trouble with the carburetor. And now for the other side of the carb. It's not much to clean on this side. Also, what I like to use on these carburetors to clean excess dirt like that is a 400 grit emery sandpaper or even a 600 will do and just basically rub it and it'll come nice and clean. Don't push too hard because you don't want to scratch the top of the card too much. And I'll just rinse it with the card cleaner again and wipe it clean with a clean rag. This carb isn't too bad, so from this point on, I'm going to start reassembling it. And if your covers were dirty, make sure to clean them as well. They're pretty good. So at this point here, I'm going to start reassembling the carburetor.
So the kit you're going to need for this repair today is a K10 watt kit from Walbro. Now when you pop the kit open you might wonder why is there so many extra parts? All I have is these two diaphragms over here and the gaskets. Well the reason there's extra parts like that is because that carburetor kit K10 watt is made to fit a lot of different carburetors which may use some of the same diaphragms but then in other carbs use a different diaphragm that is in the kit there. So don't worry about it, just match up the diaphragms from your carburetor to the carb kit. Now when you take apart the pump diaphragm you're going to see a gasket so what you want to do is match these up from the kit. Just simply go like this and you know you've got the right one. And Walbro has updated this diaphragm with a plastic one which I find is better. But just match up the holes, make sure all the holes are the same. And you also need this diaphragm and this gasket here from the kit. You're also going to need the screen and the needle. And you're also going to need the little pin and the new lever here. What I usually do with the excess parts is I save them for future use. Because you never know when you're going to need them. So I'm going to start the installation by reinstalling the small screen. I'm just going to insert it in here like that. And now I'm going to push it in right to the bottom. And you want to make sure that the screen is nice and snug down in there like that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is grab the cover, the gasket here, which goes on first. And now the diaphragm. They only go on one way, but you want to make sure that the gasket is on the cover first. Now I'm going to grab the carburetor and install it in this position here. Always remember that the screw goes on the side of the throttle cable lever. You may have to just slightly move it, and it's going to lock in there once it's on properly. And I'll just reinstall the screw. Now I'm going to make sure that this screw is fairly loose. Next I'll grab the new lever and the pin, insert it in there like this. Now I'm going to put the needle on there. First I'm going to make sure that the spring is back in its groove here and standing up like this. Now I'm going to grab the needle, lever and the pin and I've pushed the pin out like this. And you want to make sure that the spring sits under the embossed part of the lever. Now I'm just going to slide it in. Make sure you push the pin underneath the screw. And you want to make sure that the spring is in this position here, underneath the little embossed part of the lever. Hold it because the spring may fly out and you may have a hard time finding it again. So tighten up this screw as soon as you can. Don't overdo it because you can easily strip the threads. Now you want to check the height of the lever over here. This is a pretty good level. It's pretty well flush with the body of the carb. I have a Walbro tool here that is used to measure that. If you're not used to it, you can use that tool. So you basically just put the tool over the carb like that. And the lever could be a little bit down, but usually it does run in the position that it's in. Now since the tool showed that the lever is a bit high, I'm just going to hold the bottom part here of the lever and then push down. It's going to bend the lever down and it's going to be adjusted a bit better. So I'm going to hold it on one side over here and I'm just going to pry it down a bit. And now if I check with the tool you can see that it's pretty well set dead on. So now at this point you're ready to reinstall the diaphragms on this carb. First install the gasket and now install the metering diaphragm. And now the cover goes back on. Doesn't really matter which position this little hole goes in. And now tighten up the four screws evenly. This is to prevent air and fuel leaks. And you don't need to over tighten them because you could easily strip them. Now if by any chance you happen to have a pressure tester, you can test your carburetor with it. Now the first thing I'm going to do to reinstall the carburetor is rehook the throttle cable back on. And to do this I'm going to move the lever up like this, grab the cable, insert it into the hole that I've clearly marked earlier to make sure I put it back in the same one. And now you want to position the carb like this. And it may be easier to hook up this fuel line over here before you put the rest of the parts on. I'm just going to hold the connector with pliers so it doesn't go in the fuel tank. Now you want to grab the air filter cover. And you want to insert the choke linkage right into this hole here. And here's a close-up view on how to do this. Just simply insert it in there, push it down, and then turn it like that. If the choke lever comes off of here, just simply reinsert the grommet in there and push it back in. So again, make sure your carburetor is in the proper place. Line up the holes here, put the screws in, 
and then screw the carburetor in. And you want to make sure that all the bolts are lined up to the holes and then screw them in. And now make sure the screws are tight and tighten them on evenly. Now you want to check the throttle to make sure the lever on the carburetor is working properly. And if your lever moves up and down like this, then it's on right. So at this point here, I've got the carburetor back on and everything. I just don't have the air filter back on and the cover. I'm going to reinstall the spark plug and try it the way it is. I'll make sure it runs good before I reinstall the plastic shroud. And at this point here, I'll gas it up. Make sure to mix your fuel at least 50 to 1. I usually mix mine 45 to 1. So currently the screws on the carburetor over here, the low and the high, are set at one turn and a quarter out. I'm going to leave it like that to see if it runs. And if it doesn't run too good, I'll try to adjust them again. Since this is an older blower without a primer bulb, I'm going to spray some penetrating oil in the carburetor to prime it up. It'll just save me from cranking it a whole bunch of times to get the fuel up in the carb. As you can see it runs good but it does idle a bit too slow so what you have to do for that is turn in this screw up top here. It does not affect the air and fuel mixture of the carburetor. So I'll just screw it in about a turn and it should idle perfectly. start by replacing the spark plug. This machine here had a Champion RCJ7Y, so I'm going to replace it with an NGKR BPMR 7A. So now I'm going to reinstall the shroud. Now you'll have to unhook the spark plug cap again, run the shroud over the plug, rehook it. Now you want to make sure that the handle is pulled out, and you want to make sure that the grommet that's on the wire goes in the groove on the plastic shroud. Then it's going to line up perfectly like this. And you want to make sure you line up the grommet here into the plastic shroud as well. So all together there's five screws that hold the shroud on. There's two up top, one over here, and two at the bottom. All that's left to do now is to reinstall the air filters and the cover. At this point I have ordered two new filters for it. And the part number for the thin filter over here is number 130-317-0360. And there's actually supposed to be a foam filter that goes on top of this one. And it's part number 130-310-03460. And once you have, make sure to put this cover back on. I'll put the holes here down below like this. And then just screw it back on. So thanks again for watching. Hopefully this video will help you to repair your leaf blower.